Hi everybody, I'm Rihanna with VentureSoul, and welcome to today's episode of my grand dye experiment. So today we're going to be doing something I have never done before, that I've seen a lot of other people do. I'm really excited to try. We are going to speckle a rainbow onto this cotton yarn. So right here I have a 100 gram skein of 100% um, Prima Cotton from Wool to Dye For. Um, I actually have 12 colors here because I love rainbows and I can't be stopped. Um, so okay, I'm going to just go right in and um, do my best with this. Um, I'm going to fast forward most of this so that it doesn't become a ridiculously long video. Oh, um, but first of all, I just wanted to say that I actually did pre-soak this in soda ash. I, um, I don't usually pre-soak cotton in soda ash. I just, um, don't really, uh, find it to be necessary. I usually just add my soda ash dry. But clearly, since we are speckling this and then just rolling it up in the plastic wrap, um, there needs to be soda ash present and it needs to be moist to start with. So I did pre-soak this and I wring it out really well. Um, so it's just damp right now. I spread it out as well as I could here also because my goal is to not have to turn it. Although we will uh, see how that goes. <laughs> I might still um, um, end up needing to turn it. So um, without further ado, we're going right in. Oh, you know, actually, let me let you know what colors we're using. Um, so we're using, we're starting with Chinese red. And we're going into hot hibiscus, peach, orange crush, marigold, lemon yellow, electric green, forest green, blue mist, or mystic blue from Happy Cat, blueberry, plum blossom, and nightshade. Um, yeah, these are all colors that I love. So we're going to see what we get. Um, 12 color rainbow. All right, here we go. just 
spritz it with a little bit of plain water. I'm going to make sure this is plain water and not water and vinegar first. Yeah, that's plain water. Um, I'm going to spritz it with a little bit of plain water. Just a little bit. I'm not trying to soak this. I don't want there to be a ton of water here. I do just want to make sure that the color travels through to the back side of the yarn. So that's, that's why, um, that's my goal here. Okay. Okay. That's all I'm doing with that. And now I'm going to roll this all up and, um, yeah, I'm going to put it somewhere warm to, um, do its thing and we will be back to wash it out in a couple of days. Okay. Here we go. My speckled rainbow. We'll see if it comes out at all speckled or if it's just a lot of dye because I've never done this before and I have uh, heard that it's a really easy to um, go overboard and use far too much dye. I'm hoping that we still see some white space on this, but we shall see. All right, there it is. The jelly roll, as they call it. Okay. It looks pretty cool. All right. Okay, so here we are with the washout of our rainbow speckle. Um, Hopefully my phone has enough space freed up that it won't crap out on me this time. Um, let's see what we've got here. This is looking pretty cool. Pretty cool. Wow, okay. Now I'm gonna rinse this out in cold water because I don't want any um, dye to transfer onto the other parts of the yarn. And I'm going to speed it up and we're going to go from there. I'm going to leave it to soak for a while um, with some 
Dawn in the water. And I'll come back a few times throughout the evening and probably into tomorrow morning. I change the water out until it's running as clear as we can get it. Um, with this Chinese red and mystic blue and blueberry in here, it's probably going to take quite a while to actually get it clear, but we're going to try. All right. Um, yeah, I'll see you back with the finished yarn. And here is our finished rainbow speckled yarn. Um, so to be honest with you guys, I am not in love with this. Um, go ahead and unroll it here so you can see it better. Um, as is expected, the uh, yellows here, the lemon yellow got a little muddy, although I am um, pleased to say that we did preserve some of it. Um, some of these colors didn't really speckle, like this green, this electric green and the yellow. Um, the marigold I'm feeling like was just a poor choice of a yellow. <laughs> And I wound up with some white patches in the peach area over here and in the plum blossom over here. I think just because they're such fine powders that they didn't, um, they didn't really get through the yarn the way that some of the other ones did. Um, generally speaking, I'm fairly happy with the way that most of this came out. Um, we do see all the colors present. It didn't bleed too much, although again you can see in these, um, actually I don't know if you can see it on camera, but um, in these white patches they're not totally white anymore. They're a little off color. Um, you can see particularly in this one it's a little almost gray-blue. Um, I think if I were going to do this again, which I probably will, yeah, and I think I should have gone with a, a different purple than this nightshade. It just, I mean, okay, so backtrack a little bit. So one thing here is that the plum blossom is very evident and the Mystic Blue kind of got a little bit lost, which I'm a little surprised by. The Blueberry and the Nightshade almost just blended into each other. You can see where the, because I overlapped each color a little bit, um, and you can see where the Nightshade meets the Plum Blossom and they kind of work together, and you can see where the Mystic Blue meets the Blueberry, but there's not a ton of definition between the blueberry and the nightshade here, which bothers me. Um, now over here you can see the mystic blue a little bit better, but again the blueberry is kind of overtaking it. Um, you can see more of it if I open up the yarn here. Um, you can see some more of it in there. But I feel like the blueberry was too dark and the nightshade was too dark. Um, the forest green came out nice, uh, the electric green I probably wouldn't use next time because it didn't speckle very well, it more just bled out into the fabric, or I mean the, um, into the yarn. The lemon yellow, same with that, um, I think I would pick two different yellows here, or maybe even use the marigold as more of, um, an orange, even though in my mind it's a yellow. And then again here, we see like there's not a ton of definition between the orange crush and the peach. The peach is almost completely lost. Like you can see, you can see some little bits of the peach in here where it's kind of almost more of a neon orange. But again, the, um, the orange crush just totally overpowered it. It's just so much more potent of a color. Um... And then in the marigold here, you can see these darker speckles. It's not transfer from the other dye. It's just that marigold actually has some um, green splits to it, which did not translate super well on um, the cotton yarn. 
So this is a project I'd like to try again. Um, I'm probably going to keep this particular skein for myself because I don't like it. Um, I might over dye it with something or I might rewind it because sometimes I find when I reorder the color a little bit that um, I like it better. Um, so I might reskein it. Uh, if I like it better when I reskein it, I might sell it. But I'm thinking right now I'm just going to keep it for myself and make something out of it. I don't know what. Maybe a hat. <laughs> um, my husband's been asking me for a hat, so maybe I'll make him a hat out of this. He wants something bright colored, so this is nice and bright colored. Um, but yeah, overall, uh, it's not a failed experiment. Um, I don't really believe in failed experiments, especially when it comes to the world of dyeing. I feel like what we have are um, unexpected outcomes and learning opportunities. Sorry, I'm just trying to kind of center this so you guys can actually see. Um, I'll spread this out a little more so you can see too. But I feel like, yeah, there's, there's learning opportunities and there's unexpected outcomes. And this is a little bit of both. Um, I didn't quite expect this to go the way that it did. I'm not sure what I did expect, but it wasn't this. And um, if I were going to do this over, I think I would use only six colors instead of 12. And I would avoid some of these really dark colors. And I would avoid some of these really bright ones. And I would avoid things like this peach that are really super light and powdery. Um, I think I would go more with probably like the hot hibiscus, the orange crush. I'd probably do golden yellow instead of lemon yellow. Um, I'd probably go with a different green, maybe like lime squeeze or, um, I'm getting in, uh, I think flying forest from happy cat. So like maybe that one would be a good one to try for the green. The Mystic Blue I'm happy with, but I feel like it just got lost in here, which is really sad because it's a gorgeous color. And the Plum Blossom I'm also really happy with, but it would need better... Again, it's just it's too powdery of a dye. I, I want something a little heavier um, that's going to clump a little bit more because these ones that had a little bit of clump to them seem to um, speckle better. The ones that are really clumpy, like the lemon yellow and the electric green, those ones didn't really speckle at all. So I'd want to avoid anything that was super clumpy like that, but I think I would like to stick more with things, you know, in this kind of range and this kind of range where they're not super sticky and they're not... It's not to a point where you couldn't crumble them between your fingers, but where they're also not super fine powders. Um would seem to be the best thing to work with here. So I think I'm gonna try this again, um, and I'm gonna go with six colors, and I'm gonna pick a different set of six colors. Um, and yeah, uh, let me twist this back up. I'll do it on camera so you can see it in action. Yay, isn't that pretty? Um, but yeah, um, I don't hate it, but I'm not entirely happy with the outcome either. Uh, I think it could have been better. And I'm going to try it again um, with hopefully better results. And I will, uh, I will film that when I do it too. Um, and we'll have a, a redemption as um, it's come to be known on uh, Steph and Scott's lives. <laughs> um, so yeah, here we go. Here it is. Uh, happy dying, everybody. Um, yeah, all you need is a, a dream in your heart and a desire to put it into motion. And if you feel like you failed, you haven't failed. You just learned something new. Um, that's the way that making anything goes. I have learned throughout my life, everything is just a grand experiment, which is why I'm calling these videos that, um, yeah, and that's it. Peace out, everybody.